Hey everybody, it's Ben here. Let's figure out how to keep the guy driving behind you from crashing into the back of your brand new do-it-yourself electric car. One thing a person should consider when working with regenerative braking is the ability to turn on the brake lights. Uh, this is something that we've been talking about for a long, long time. Uh, years back when my friend Tom converted uh, his Dodge Neon to an AC electric car, we were actually talking about it back at that time. He's a nerdy electrical engineer type and was thinking about some different ways of doing that. And then of course now we have commercially built electric cars and some of them can actually brake very, very quickly just using regenerative brakes, uh, sometimes without even touching the brake pedal. Uh, some of these cars have what they might call uh, one pedal driving or e-pedal, different names like that. But the whole idea is as soon as you let off the throttle, the car starts slowing down quickly. And these cars are equipped so that when you're slowing down just from the regenerative brakes, that it still puts on the brake lights. Well, wouldn't it be nice to have a feature like that on our do-it-yourself electric car? Now, uh, in my last video, I was working on regenerative brakes with this setup right here. We've got a Nissan Leaf motor. It's the EM57, the second gen motor with its associated inverter. And then to send a throttle signal to that up here on top, we've got a Thunderstruck Motors VCU or vehicle control unit. And running into that, I've just got this little cheapy uh, Hall Effect scooter throttle. Works just fine for testing. Uh, and if I give it a spin right now, we'll spin up the rotor and when I let go, it's gonna slow down through regenerative braking. And you see it slows down relatively quick. Uh, if this was just a straight up motor with no regen on it, that would spin for just about forever without any load on it. But uh, down here on my computer, I can connect to the VCU and I can change some of those parameters. So right now, if I just type show config, it's gonna show me some of those settings, including right down here, the command I'm using is idle regen. So there's a couple different ways of doing regenerative brakes on here, but this is for uh, essentially if you just let off the throttle, you're not hitting the brake or anything, but you want it to slow down when you're not touching the accelerator. And right now it's set to 100 Newton meters. Now I can certainly turn that up. 100 Newton meters isn't uh, crazy high because the max we can do on this is 500 Newton meters. Now, right down here, I've got an old brake light. I think this was from uh, when I tried doing an LED brake light upgrade on my old city car. And I don't want that reflection on there. There we go, that looks better. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm controlling that with a relay. The output from the VCU is only going to support a uh, very low current. Uh, this is very common with uh, pretty much any type of microcontroller. If you have an Arduino, for example, you might use uh, straight up output for just turning a single LED on or off, but uh, typically anything higher powered, you would want a relay to be able to do that. Uh, typically those relays look something like this. This is actually a bank of eight of them. Kind of cool, you can have your little microcontroller turn on eight different lights, uh, you know, do some fancy uh, Halloween or Christmas light sort of a show, something like that. Uh, but today what we're using is just very much your typical automotive relay. Uh, all a relay is, is it's just a remote control switch. That's it. Uh, but typically it's turned on by low current to switch high current, but you could also use it for uh, lower voltage to switch a higher voltage or even direct current to switch alternating current or vice versa. So it's a handy thing. You see a zillion of these in cars. You can buy these cheap at any auto parts store. So right down here, I have this brake light configured so that the output from the VCU uh, activates the relay and then the relay connects a separate 12 volt power source directly uh, through the brake light here. Now, the other thing that's kind of interesting is that the output on this brake zero pin or wire up here on the VCU, um, it's not 12 volt positive. It's actually negative. It's a open, open collector to ground. And what that means is when it's off, it's not connected to anything. But when it's on, it's actually connected to the negative, the ground side of everything over here. So this is kind of wired up um, 
a little backwards from how I typically would do it. Um, typically switching most commonly is done on a positive side or a hot side of an electrical circuit, uh, but not true in this case. Not a big deal, it works just fine. Now the other thing is that according to the instruction manual for the VCU, uh, it's only going to activate the brake lights above a certain amount of torque. And this makes sense. I mean, basically, if you're out on the freeway, you're driving along in your gas car, you let off the accelerator, the car slows down a little bit, but you know, it's not like you're trying to throw the brake lights on behind you. But if you were slowing down a lot, you certainly would want to. So as it is right now, uh, we only have, if I hit show config again here, um, 100 Newton meters on our idle regen. Let's change that. We'll, we'll crank it up. We will set idle regen 500 Newton meters, which is our maximum. And this time I'm going to give it a good twist and I'm going to let go. And that should activate the relay and activate our brake light. So there you go, we slow down fast. If you saw a little bounce back there, that's actually because there's no load on this. It wouldn't be doing this if it was connected to uh, a flywheel, a clutch, uh, some wheels, something like that. Um, but those lights came on right there. Uh, the other thing was, well, what's the cutoff point for turning on that brake light? It didn't actually list it in the instruction manual. So I sat here, I went down, and I just went set, idle, regen, I don't know. Okay, at 500 it works, at 100 it doesn't. Let's say uh, 250. Try it again. Okay, so at 250 Newton meters, it's, uh, it's activating the brake lights. Well, I went through that, I experimented, and I found out it's above 150 Newton meters that the brake lights kick on. At 150 or less, it does not. Uh, the other thing is it will not engage the brake light at, um, at lower RPMs. So if I just twist this real lightly here and let off, no brake lights. Now, of course, the other thing too is that um, it's not about the speed of the motor, but the torque, the oomph, in this case, since it's regen, how much would be slowing the car down by. So I could crank the motor, let oh, I don't know, halfway back off on the throttle, and it'll regen down to that point, but keep spinning. Let's check that out. So the brake light seems to track pretty well with, uh, with that reduction of torque, uh, slowing the car down. Uh, one thing is, as soon as it's not slowing the car down anymore, it lets back off right away. I know when I'm driving a gas car, uh, if I slow down my foot's on the brake and I'm keeping my foot on the brake even after I've let off. So that's one thing that's just a little bit different here. Uh, but typically, you know, if you're coming up to a traffic light or something like that, or you're trying to stop very quickly in an emergency, uh, right after you're letting off that throttle, you're hitting the brake anyways. So I don't see that as a big deal at, at all. And again, this is just uh, braking by letting off the throttle. Uh, there's also separate com commands and controls in here uh, for the regenerative braking based off the brake pedal. So there you have it with the Thunderstruck VCU simple 12 volt automotive relay and your original brake lights, you can activate the brake lights when slowing through regen instead of your traditional braking so the guy behind you knows what's going on and you stay safe. And before I forget, one other thing I wanted to say about the Thunderstruck VCU as a product is that uh, it looks like the, they're doing a good job of updating it. Um, I've already seen there's some firmware updates. I actually did a firmware update before recording this video right now. Um, some other things like in the instruction manual, remember a little while back, I didn't know what the minimum voltage I would need 
to make this run. And because of this, I kind of had to run around, get some more batteries to get it to work. Well, in a now updated version of the user manual, it actually talks about that. So uh, somebody else won't get in that same situation again. You can go, ah, okay, here's the minimum voltages. Here's the recommended voltages. It's right in there. So it's really nice to see that uh, the manufacturers are keeping this product updated. Um, I even saw, for example, uh, in a updated version of the instruction manual, there's a reference to version 3.1.8. I'm on 3.1.7 uh, with a new feature for reverse. So instead of um, having to use the second pole of the forward neutral reverse switch to turn on a brake light, backup light, I've got brake lights on the brake, instead of uh, to turn on a backup light, it can actually be done through one of the outputs on here. So a, kind of a cool feature there as well. I hope you like these videos. I like learning about all this kind of stuff and sharing it. Uh, if you do as well, please, uh, Share this video, you know, put it on Facebook or Twitter or whatever the kids are doing these days. I'm also over on Patreon. Come check us out over there and at 300mpg.org. And until next time, stay charged up.